State won the toss. Deferred. Michigan to receive. Oh, what a spring-like day it is here in November. 47 degrees. The temperature is supposed to go up into the 50s by the time this one ends. So Ohio State will kick it off. Hobbiel will send it away. Ambry Thomas is the deep man for the Wolverines. Over 100,000 ready to watch the greatest rivalry in all of sports, and we're underway from the shoe. And this ball will be returned from the 10 by Thomas, still on his feet, breaks the tackle, and a solid run as Ambry Thomas is brought down by Wint. And so that'll bring on Shea Patterson. And when you look at the roster, he's listed as a man that's from Shreveport, Louisiana. But he's not. This is a man that from 0 to 12 grew up in Toledo, Ohio. As a Michigan fan, and he's been outstanding this year, I think the thing that he's done best is protect the football. Only four interceptions all year long. He's got to continue that today in the biggest environment that he's faced yet in his college career. One of five finalists for the Johnny Unitas Quarterback of the Year Award. So the Wolverines will start first down and 10 of the 24. Karan Higdon, 1,000-yard running back, will carry it for the first time, and he's got room, gets out of bounds as he crosses the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Damon Arnett there to knock him out of play. Well, this defense has been much maligned all season long, and this offense for Michigan is going to try to attack all the inefficiencies and weaknesses. One of the things that Ohio State has struggled with is when their safeties and support players, outside linebackers, have been in space, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to make tackles. Chris Evans comes in and running back after the eight-yard Higdon game. Second down and two at the 32. Patterson to throw it. In trouble, and he sat. Shot out of a cannon, Malik Harrison. Well, that's what they need to do. Present Patterson with different looks and get to him with pressure. They're able to do that and force a long yardage third down situation. This is not Michigan's forte. Watch Chase Young, number two for Ohio State. He's their best pass rusher. He's going to be at the bottom of the formation for the Buckeyes. A loss of seven, third down and nine at the 25. Here's Patterson, sprints out of the pocket. Buying time, throws on the move, and it is incomplete. Intended for Grant Perry. And the Wolverines will be forced to put it away. Perry had space, and Patterson delivered a ball that should have been caught on the sideline. But it just got too far into his body. And Ohio State gets off the field on their first drive. K.J. Hill, the deep man, Will Hart. Having a fine season, will punt it away from his own 10. Hart averaging 48 yards per punt. And he drives this one. Hill starts at the 15. Hill with running room. Hill hits the sideline. And KJ Hill gets out of bounds. A 55-yard punt and a 22-yard return. And that brings on Dwayne Haskins, the sophomore from Potomac, Maryland, who is a Heisman Trophy candidate. And he should be. And he's done a remarkable job this year carrying this team when their run game has struggled, when their defense has struggled. 36 passing touchdowns coming into this week. He was tied for first after yesterday's barn burner in Morgantown. He's fallen down to third in the FBS as Will Greer and Kyler Murray had some fireworks. But I tell you what, Haskins is a remarkable player. First down and 10 of the 43 for Haskins. He's a prototype drop back passer, but he's been running it lately. Look at the way. On first down, he'll gain nine yards on the play. A partner, he was solid in the run game last week at Maryland. I, I would go further than solid. He was great in the run game. Three rushing touchdowns, 15 attempts last week. A far change from what they were earlier in the year. He ran for 59 yards. J.K. Dobbins looking for the first down, and he has it. So Dobbins and Mike Weber 
The two running backs both have over 2,000 career rushing yards. Weber's going to wear number five today. He changed his number from 25, the Detroit native. First and 10 of the 46. Haskins to throw. Underneath, and it's caught. Dwayne Haskins putting that one on the money. Paris Campbell gets out of bounds. And he gains 16. This is one of the things that Ohio State is so good at crossing routes. These veteran group of wide receivers, a lot of speed, and that's exactly what gives man defense a lot of trouble. That's exactly what Michigan runs on almost every snap. Right there, Haskins delivers an accurate ball and allows for yards after the catch. First down and 10 of the 30 yard line. And a whistle. False start. Offense. Number 78. Five yard penalty. First down. Demetrius Knox, the right guard. He's right here. That right side and just gets a little bit of a lunge. They've had problems with that at times. Those false starts and the cadence and the snap count have not always been in sync. So it's something to watch here early. First down and 15 at the Michigan 35 opening series for Ohio State. Watch for a little pressure on that left side. Here's Haskins steps into his throw underneath and he has his receiver. It's McCall and Demario McCall gains 11 yards on the play. Indiana gave the Wolverines fits last week with those crossing routes over the middle. Indiana had so much success and you know Ohio State who does that anyways but they were going to come in here and try to exploit that early against this Wolverine defense and they've done so Haskins doing a great job delivering that ball out in front and allowing for more running second down and four Haskins swings it out and that one had a lot of hot sauce on it KJ Hill the intended receiver yeah and there that was interesting. I was really close to being a backwards pass. Very close. I think it was forward. They call it incomplete. So that's going to save him about five yards, which is so important here going into a third down. Dwayne Haskins last week against Maryland, 28 of 38, 405 yards passing, three touchdowns and a pick. Here's Haskins under pressure this time. And he finds his man. Olave, touchdown, Buckeye. And just like that, Ohio State marches it right down the field. 24-yard score to take a 6 to nothing lead. It's always the outside receiver that we're seeing get across the middle. And the corner just has no time. The corner's going to try to keep up with him, but he can't do it as he's trying to work through everything that's in front of him. And it's a foot race. Buckeyes win it into the end zone. Extra point. Javier. And it's good. Chris Olave from San Marcos, California, with his first career touchdown reception. And he gives Ohio State a 7 0 lead. And it looks like Urban Meyer has decided to put as much speed on the field as possible. Got to do that against man coverage, and they certainly made him pay. Thomas to the 20. Thomas. And Ambry Thomas gets up to the 35. So Shea Patterson back on the field, sacked on his opening series. So what kind of adjustment will Michigan make for their second series? You're likely going to see them get right back into what they want to be, which is that run first oriented team, multiple tight ends on the field, fullback possibly, and then get into that run game where they're pulling guards, maybe the center as well. Cesar Ruiz was an excellent lineman on the edge. Watch them try to establish the run game here on this series. First down and 10 at the 35. Karan Higdon, the pistol back, and they give it to him. And Higdon gain a couple as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Tough Borland, Robert Landers combining on the tackle. And Karan Higdon is our Duracell most trusted player today in the game. And Higdon, eight different times this year, has run for 100 yards. Second most in college football just to Jonathan Taylor up in Wisconsin. 1,106 yards rushing coming into this game. Higdon now running right. And Karan Higdon gets close to the 40-yard line. Tough Borland again with the tackle. 
A one yard gain makes it third down and six at the 39. Ohio State has done a wonderful job on these opening two series of creating a longer yardage situation on third down. This is not what Michigan likes. They're struggling right now getting the play call in. Patterson's going to be in the huddle with now under 20 to go on the play clock. Michigan will be forced to hurry up up to the line of scrimmage. Here now 12 on the play clock counting down. Third and six of the 39. And Michigan calls a timeout. Wolverines unorganized on that play. Shea Patterson faced with a third down and six at his own 39 yard line. The Buckeye defense looks fast today. Watch out for Zach Gentry. A huge height advantage over the defender. He's 6 8. Here's Patterson. Looking at Gentry. Now Patterson dancing, throws across the middle, and it's caught to Reek Black. And Michigan has a first down. Here's a man that they're very high on, Tariq Black. He's battled numerous foot injuries. Last year, he was having a great freshman season, lost the season to a foot injury, then in fall camp, injured his foot again, and he's just working his way back. This is his second catch of the year. He did a marvelous job of settling down and allowing Shea to find him there for a first down. Gained 15 yards, first down and 10, and they'll run it with Ben Mason, the fullback, 6'3", 254. Yeah, these linebackers right now for Ohio State, number 39 Malik Harrison and number 32 Tough Borland, they are as active as I've seen them all year. Watched all their film, and they would get caught at times in the wrong gap. They are active and recognizing what Michigan is doing off the bat, playing very well so far early in this game. Second down and seven at the 43. Higdon. And Higdon almost popped one, but tough Borland. Nice tackle to bring him down for the three-yard gain. Borland does a great job. This is our ump cam. Here he is, number 32. See him just sit, 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 wait. Then he gets under the block, and he's there for the stop. Excellent job. That's perfect linebacker play. Third down and four at the 40 for the Wolverines. Chris Evans enters the game and running back. Evans breaks it back first down Wolverines as Evans jitterbugs his way inside the Ohio State 30 for an 11 yard gain Kendall Sheffield with the tackle check out that right side of the offensive line you've got 71 Andrew Stuber and you've got 83 Zach Gentry opening up that lane and Evans is able to cut back find it and move the chains for Michigan those tight ends for the Michigan Wolverines it's important what they do in the passing game but Gus it's maybe more important what they do in the run game opening up those lanes on the outside last week against Indiana Evans 10 carries 44 yards first and 10 at the 29 Wolverines stand on the ground as Evans gets outside Chris Evans missed three Big Ten games to injury earlier this season, but he's running strong now. And he's, he looks right now, and, and late last week against Indiana, I felt like he has looked as fresh as he's looked all season, finally starting to get healthy. You can see that burst. After he gets the ball, he's got that step or two of burst that he had last year and maybe didn't have when he was banged up earlier this season. Second down at seven of the 26. Mason picked it in the eye formation. Higdon, second man through, and he's wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. Great defense. Devon Hamilton, the junior from Pickerington, Ohio, with the tackle. Check out Hamilton right here. He's at his nose tackle position. He just swims right across Cesar Ruiz, the center, and he's in the backfield. Nothing Michigan can do here. And another one of these long yardage situations. Shea Patterson has to avoid the rush, keep his eyes downfield, try to make a play to one of those big wide receivers. Third down and seven at the 26. Remember, Patterson has great wheels. Sprints out of the pocket, throws. Donovan Peoples-Jones with the catch, but he's short of the first down. I mean, just an excellent catch, but the route was designed too short. Watch as Peoples-Jones, number nine, he's running the out route. He doesn't get the depth, and he's got to dive a little bit backwards. He makes an excellent catch. 
But Michigan now having to attempt a field goal. So Jake Moody, the team's kickoff specialist, got the call to place kick last week against Indiana because of an illness to Quinn Nordine. And he went six for six with a long of 36 yards. This one from 39 yards away. And it's good. Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Penn State. All that remains on the revenge tour. Ohio State today. Wolverine send it away to Mario McCall, the deep man. And he'll take a knee in the end zone. So Dwayne Haskins back on the field. And, you know, it's been a challenging year for this Ohio State offense. Haskins, a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, starting for the first time. He comes in as a pure pocket passer, yeah. something that Urban Meyer hasn't seen in his style in quite some time. Yeah, and, and the clarification is it hasn't been a struggle on the stat sheet. It's been a struggle with their identity and, and their blueprint. And I won't be surprised to see Haskins run more today now that the money's down and the chips in the middle of the table here for the game. But this has been a difficult thing, trying to find that old-style Urban Meyer quarterback running game and yet also allow Dwayne to do what he does best, which is attack from the pocket. Here's Haskins to throw it on first down, gets it out wide. And incomplete. Paris Campbell, the intended receiver, but there is a flag on the play. I felt like there was a hold in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Surprise, surprise, Michigan had a blitz on, and Josh Ross, the linebacker, was kind of thrown down. I wonder if they're going to get a hold here on Luke Farrell, the tight end for Ohio State. Holding. Holding. Offense number 89 10-yard penalty repeat first down. Yeah, that is Luke Farrell Mike Cannon your referee today So here he comes there's Farrell He's gonna come just across the line of scrimmage and then watch as he's gonna block Josh Ross And then he just kind of tosses him down to the ground as Ross is heading into the quarterback First down at 20 at the 15 Mike Weber in it running back number five and they give it to Weber high stepping as he hops through the hole Mike Weber went to Cass Tech High School in Detroit, brought down by Tyree Kittle. Well, that first series for Ryan Day, the offensive coordinator, was a master class in those crossing routes. I wonder if we're about to see another one of those crossing routes right now, maybe even a screen pass from Ryan Day. Second down at 16 at the 19-yard line. Here's Haskins with all day to throw it. Winds up and incomplete. That one thrown long for Paris Campbell. Well, this is the situation that Michigan thrives in. Third and medium or long, this situation will be third and long. Don Brown loves to create pressure with the speed on the outside now. Here's what he's got to deliberate. Do you want to get in one-on-one -on -one or do you want to have a few safeties deep with 16 to go? Third down and 16 at the 19-yard line. Haskins. Steps up in the pocket. Now dances. Haskins throws on the move. And incomplete. Intended for Weber. Devin Bush in his hip pocket. And the Buckeyes will have to punt it away. Well, I, I tell you what, Gus, Michigan's getting away right now with some holding on the outside. Watch number one. He's on the left side of your screen. 28 Brandon Watson just holds him. Johnny Dixon was about to come across the middle and hit up field and Brandon Watson's just holding him. All the Ohio State coaches were pointing in the middle of the field wanting a flag didn't get it. So Drew Chrisman punts it away to Donovan Peoples Jones and he has the fair catch at the 35 a 46 yard punt. On first down and 10 at the 35, Drew Wilson running over the left side and not a lot of room as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage brought down by Dante Booker. Booker did a great job, outstanding job as he's just going to take off all the way out to the right side and he just never allows True Wilson to get to his outside, forcing him back in where all the pursuit of the defense is coming from. Second down and nine to the 36. Evans, number 12, and a tailback. And a timeout Charge called time by out. Ohio State. Second down and nine at the 36. Patterson, quick toss into the flats, and it's caught Ronnie Bell. And Ronnie Bell, this young man from Kansas City, Missouri, a freshman, 
picks up a first down. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. What a find Ronnie Bell was in recruiting. Lightly recruited. He was the Kansas City area's top high school player. He won the Thomas A. Simone Award given to the top football player in Kansas City. But he's explosive at just six foot, about 180 pounds. And they used him appropriately on those screen passes and in the RPO situations. So he didn't pick up the first down. Third down and short. Michigan needs a yard. Big ben Mason, Gus, in the tailback spot. Remember, he's 254. And Mason straight ahead, first down Wolverine. Jim Harbaugh likes to refer to Ben Mason as inertia <laughs> when he gets it moving forward. Pretty hard to stop. Oh, you love it. And this team. I don't think there's anybody that loves a fullback more maybe on the face of the planet than Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines and Ben Mason has done a heck of a job for him this year. First down at the 47 Mason remains in the game. Eubanks the motion man. Play fake. Patterson looking. Patterson steps up throws down the field and incomplete nobody home. But there is a flag. Nico Collins, the intended receiver. Boy, Damon Arnett might get called here because he kind of turned Nico Collins late. Nico Collins actually slowed down. Pass interference. Defense, number three. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. This is a tough one for Arnett because on the other side, you're going to have the tight ends trying to get down the field. And then the wide receiver from the opposite side, he's coming across the field, and Nico Collins was just held right at the last moment. Urban Meyer not pleased with that call. 15-yard penalty. Michigan has it first and 10 at the Ohio State 38. They hand it off to Evans, and Evans just slicing through. The Buckeye defense for an eight-yard gain as Brendan White brings him down. Another great block from a fullback. Sean McCune this time, number 84. Got a great block, springing Evans in the middle of that Ohio State defense. And now, all of a sudden, Michigan's got something cooking. You know, Pep Hamilton on these second and shorts, he loves to just pound away with the run game. He calls them body shots. We'll see if he does it here. Second and two at the 30. Higdon back in. And Higdon pursued from behind and goes down. Once again, it's Malik Harrison. Harrison just comes like a bullet straight into the backfield, and Higdon cannot run away from him. Higdon's trying to get to the edge. He's unaccounted for. Speaking of Harrison, nobody lays a hand on him. And he forces Michigan back for a longer yardage opportunity here on third down. That's a loss of five. Third and seven at the 35. Empty backfield for Shea Patterson. Patterson underneath and it's caught. First down, Chris Evans. Evans lining up as a receiver on the far side, ran a nice route. He I mean, got a career high five against the Buckeyes in this game last year. He gets a little bit of a delay off the line of scrimmage, and then he's working against a linebacker. That's Pete Warner out there. That's a mismatch. Evans is too fast for him and runs a really good clean route as a running back on the outside, and that's a good pass from the quarterback, Shea Patterson. First down and 10 of the 27 for the Wolverines. Patterson. Decides to run it. Patterson hits the sideline and gets out of bounds inside the Ohio State 20. And they are very deceptive with those handoffs. Patterson will pull it and run it in a heartbeat. I think Patterson is about as good as anybody in college football at making this read. And you see how he goes all the way down with the ball. He almost turns his shoulders all the way towards the line of scrimmage. That forces the defender to commit. Once Patterson sees that the defender has committed, he gets onto the outside and he's got enough athleticism to gain some yards. Second down and two of the 19. Higdon looking for the first down and he'll be close. White rustles him down. 
Well, here's another one of these situations. If you were with us last week, you saw Michigan get into the red zone eight different times. They only scored a touchdown on one of those trips. So we've got a first down inside the red zone. We'll see if the Wolverines have cleaned up those problems that arose last week against Indiana. First down, Michigan. At the Ohio State 17, Higdon remains in the game at running back. Here's Patterson, rolls out of the pocket. Patterson, and he'll dump it down to Higdon at the line of scrimmage. Gene Patterson, Patrick. They're generally a really heavy run team on first and second down in the red zone. Try to break a tendency right there from Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator, and run a little bit of a run action pass, getting onto the outside. It just didn't work out. Great coverage from the Ohio State defense. Tenth play of the drive that started at the Wolverine 35. Second and nine. Patterson to Higdon trying to pick his way through the hole not a lot of room as Higdon Michigan Ohio State a series that dates back to 1897 as you take a look at my partners Joel Flat, Jenny Tab, Mike Pereira on site with us as well third and six of the 13. Patterson rolls, throws, caught and dropped. Gentry, the intended receiver, but Warner somehow knocked it out of his hands. Great play design, and the pass was excellent. I mean, this one was on the money from Patterson. Watch as he just floats it right over Warner, right into the hands. And just a great defensive play at the last minute. Warner with his right hand knocks the ball out and forces Michigan into another field goal chance. So Jake Moody already good from 39 yards away. This one will be from 31 yards out. And good again. This kid has been perfect. Jake Moody six for six last week. Two for two. So far in this game, he's eight for eight to start his career. We have a one-point game here in the game. Soggy day for Michigan, Ohio State, Urban Meyer. It's been a challenging season for Coach Meyer. And we will get into that as this game continues. Meanwhile, Jake Moody has been brilliant for the Wolverines. Eight for eight to start his career. Demario McCall is the deep man. And it's fair caught in the end zone. So Dwayne Haskins back on the field. Michigan had some answers for him the last time. I think it's the toughest thing to do, quite honestly, on a day that I know it's not really cold, but there's a chill in the air. Dwayne Haskins in this offense have only snapped the football nine times, been on the field for just over three minutes. And so to establish rhythm again after that outstanding opening drive, we got to get back into it here. First down, here's Dobbins in the open field, and Dobbins goes down. Brandon Watson, Johnny on the spot as he stands up, J.K. Dobbins. Surprises Ohio State, even though it's early, haven't gotten back to one of those crossing routes. One's got to be coming soon because that opening drive, they just torched Michigan with them. Second down and nine. Dobbins looking for the first down, knocked out of bounds by Devin Bush. And a flag. I think this is going to be on Devin Bush. Devin Bush had a very legal hit. There was some blocking going on down the field. I think number 66, Malcolm Pridgen, the left guard, was blocking late. Watch 66 late. See, Bush is clearly legal. There's 66. After up. the play's over, dead ball personal foul, offense number 66. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. The down counts will be third down. 
Keep watching, keep watching. See up there that shoved in the back after the play. That's when the flag came out. That's our line judge there with a camera on his hat. Here's Devin Bush. That hit was clearly legal. So when the flag came out, I knew that it probably would not be on Devin Bush. And calling it closely there is Malcolm Pridgen. Hurts his offense with a personal foul. Bridgen a senior from Central Islip, New York. Third and 16 at the 19 yard line. Wolverines with a chance to get off the field once again. Haskins, here comes a blitz. Haskins over the middle. And incomplete. That ball broken up by David Long. Intended for Johnny Dixon. And the Buckeyes will have to punt. And it was maybe thrown just a hair behind. See how he has to reach back to that right shoulder, and that allows David Long to reach in there and break it up. If that ball is out in front of Dixon, he can reach out over his left shoulder and keep running. It's probably a completion. Now you're starting to see the speed of the Michigan secondary as they've made the adjustment to some of those crossing routes. There's a reason they're the number one pass defense in the country, and you've seen it in the last couple of series, their ability to contest and break up those Potential catches down the field. Well, State got a little early start there at the wide receiver position. Ball start. Offense, number 83. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That was Terry McLaurin. A little early start. Urban Meyer not happy right now with the execution on what looks like it's going to be nearly a first down run. He gets a personal foul from Malcolm Pridgen, now backed up by a false start, and they're going to give Michigan some good field position here early in the second quarter. Chrisman standing near his goal line, got this one away. And it goes out of bounds. Woody Hayes won five national championships between 1954 and 1970. First down and 10 at midfield for the Wolverines. Ronnie Bell, the motion man. Play fake, deep drop, Patterson in trouble and sack for the second time. Robert Landers. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, Gus, it was a simple message from Coach Urban Meyer to the offense. He said, we're not going to lose this game because of penalties. Clean it up right now. He was not happy, guys. Would like to see a response when they get the chance. Urban Meyer, very active. On the Ohio State sideline. Remember, he's been battling a cyst in his brain. He's had brain surgery. He suffers from migraine headaches when he gets too fired up. And they'll run it. Chris Evans. And Pete Warner with the tackle brings up a third down. 13 for Michigan. Yeah, this is where Patterson has to really be patient because with that defense, I know they're down a point, but it's still early in this ball game. He cannot force this ball into traffic. A punt here is still a good play if you're Michigan with that number one defense in all of college football. So Patterson, he's got to be patient and make a good choice here. Just four interceptions on the season for Shea Patterson. Third and 13 at the 47. Patterson. Over the middle. And it's caught, but not enough for the first down. Donovan Peoples Jones couldn't keep his footing. You know, with only two to go, though, with that field position, I think you're going to see Jim Harbaugh go for it. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw Ben Mason run on the field. No, he won't. He's going to keep the same personnel on the field. And Jim Harbaugh is going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth down and two. Now he's going to have to take a timeout. Second timeout Charge called timeout. by the Wolverines. Michigan. Fourth down and two at the 42. Michigan going for it. They're 9 of 17 on fourth down conversions this year. And Mason, the power fullback in the game. And, and the jumped. Wolverines jump. False start. Offense number 50. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Really got two guys on that side, the guard and the tackle. <laughs> they both jumped off there. Harbaugh 
knows that he's got to punt it after that happens. Michael Lawainu. Second punt now for Will Hart. The Wolverines are 23rd in the country in net punting, gaining 40 yards of field position on average each time they kick it. And this one into the end zone for a touchback. After some of those penalties, and that defense went out there and did a heck of a job getting off the field. Michigan punts it into the end zone. We start at the 20-yard line. Two sacks for Ohio State in this game. Haskins throwing it up top. And Mike Weber had a step. Haskins just unable to put it on him. He was wide open. What a design here. They get man to man with the linebacker Devin Gill and that's a huge win for Ohio State. Dwayne Haskins has got to put it on him. Can't overthrow that ball. Urban Meyer knows it. Haskins four of nine 52 yards and a touchdown pass. Second and ten of the 20. Haskins runs it himself this time slides down and gets close to the first down mark. Dwayne Haskins, 59 yards rushing last week and three rushing touchdowns against Maryland. And when we talked to the coaching staff about that, they said, listen, chips are in the middle of the table now. He has to, right? There's no one there to defend him. He's got to be able to run it. You see it right there. Third down and one for Ohio State. Haskins drops it off. And first down. Luke Farrell. What a run after the catch by Farrell. He catches this behind the line to gain, lowers his shoulder, and moves the sticks. Buckeyes quickly to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 at the 34. And they'll run it. Weber, and Weber will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Well defended. Tyree Kennel, the safety, comes up. And when you look at Ohio State now, they look more like a Big 12 team playing in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, that's kind of that, that spread style of run that Urban Meyer has always loved. And then Ryan Day, the offensive coordinator, has come in. And I think he's done a wonderful job with their passing game. And he's the one that's been incorporating these crossing routes over the middle with this fast group of wide receivers. I'm sure we're about to get one of those soon. Second down and 11 at the 33. Haskins. Over the middle. Caught. McClure, first down Buckeyes. It's a great design here. Watch, McLaurin's going to come in, and then he's going to actually break back outside. We call this a little break route. Boom, I'm going inside. No, I'm going out. He gets space. Haskins gives him the ball, and then another physical finish to a run by an Ohio State wide receiver slash tight end. You saw Meyer there loving it. First down at the 45. Haskins on course one and incomplete Benjamin Victor had it he just couldn't hold on boy and with the moisture that's in the air you see that it's sprinkling a little bit these new age gloves get slippery but it didn't slip through his hands it just bounced off his right hand right there and Victor is a guy that's so talented but he has struggled with consistency during the course of his career here as a Buckeye and unable to come down with that one that would have been a huge play second down and 10 at the 45 Mike Weber lines up as a receiver and he's got one on one up there with a linebacker Devin Gill here's Haskins looks the opposite way crossing right over the middle, K.J. Hill with yards after the catch as he gets inside the Michigan 30 for a 20-yard gain. You knew it was coming, and there they finally get it. K.J. Hill matched up on the third corner. Brandon Watson, number 28, that they have now attacked three different times with these crossing routes, and they're able to just get him right here. He motions inside, and then boom, he's coming across. Here's some other crossing routes from the other side of the formation, and it's an easy pickup for the Buckeyes. First down to the Michigan 28 for Ohio State, and it's Weber. And Mike Weber. Picks up about five on the play, but for the first time in school history, partner, the Buckeyes have three career 1,000-yard receivers at the same time with a fourth closing in, K.J. Hill, Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin, and Johnny Dixon. 
Johnny Dixon getting close to a thousand yards. Second and six at the 24. Haskins to the corner. Haskins touchdown again. Chris Olave with his second career touchdown. He ran a great run. The young man from San Marcos, California. And they're picking on number 28, Brandon Watson. Far side of your screen over there on the left. Here he goes, great release off the line of scrimmage, stays in bounds, and then he's able to come back to the ball for an easy touchdown. This Ohio State team has done a wonderful job locating the third corner for Michigan, number 28, Brandon Watson, and attacking him anytime he's on the field. Huge catch there for Olave. Two 24-yard touchdown receptions for Chris Olave. And the Buckeyes with a chance to take a 14-6 lead here in the second quarter. I think that they're looking at whether he stepped out of bounds or not. I didn't think he did. That, that's the step there, but it looked like his heel was up, and it was just his toe in the field of play to me. I think that's what they're taking a look at. You see, that's a great angle. The camera on the hat of our line judge that heel was certainly up here's our pylon cam you see as he's getting close to the line and quite frankly I think you could have made the argument that he was blocked you know and pushed out of bounds as well which then would have negated an illegal touching or the potential After for review, illegal touching. the ruling on the field is confirmed touchdown Dwayne Haskins now two touchdown passes away for breaking Drew Brees' 1998 Big Ten record of 39 touchdown passes. But more importantly, the Buckeyes with 9.08 to go in the second quarter. Take a 14 to 6 lead. How about Chris Olave, the true freshman? In his first nine games this year, he had two catches. In his last three games, including today, five catches and two touchdowns. Two touchdowns in the biggest game of his young life. Well, let's take a look at the current Big Ten standings presented by Discover. We know that out of the West, Northwestern has already punched their ticket, 7-1 in conference. And here in the game, Michigan and Ohio State play for the right to play the Wildcats next week. And be sure to tune in to the Big Ten championship game presented by Discover December 1st, next Saturday on Fox. Ohio's defense, Ohio State defense has looked very quick. That last series is just a huge win. You know, they give up terrible field position, and they're able to force a punt. The offense goes right down the field and puts another touchdown on the board. First down, and it's Higdon. Higdon breaks a tackle, picks up the first down. Stiff arms and gets to the 40-yard line. Kendall Sheffield with the stop, but it's a 15-yard gain. Yeah, it's imperative here that Michigan is able to answer because it's clear that Ohio State's offense has some things schematically that are going to be there all day long, in particular with some of the personnel that Michigan is having to put on the field. So at this point, if you're the offensive coaches for the Wolverines, you realize that you're going to have to get going in a little bit, and you're going to have to put it into gear. First down at the 40. McCune and Gentry line up top of your screen. Ronnie Bell, the motion man. They hand it off. Higdon. Ron Higdon is the first Michigan running back to go for a thousand yards in a season since Fitzgerald Toussaint in 2011. Return to Michigan this year after considering the NFL draft. Game four on the play. Team captain, leader. Guys on this team absolutely love Karan Higdon. Second and six at the 44. Evans this time. And Evans lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And Malik Harrison right there again. I'm telling you, these linebackers for Ohio State, they are playing their best game of the season so far, and they needed it. They needed it desperately like they needed their next breath of air for this defense to finally start to get some stops. Pete Warner, number 20, tough ball in 32, and Malik Harrison, 39, with a chance to get off the field again for the Buckeyes. Third down and five of the 45. 
Patterson out of the gun. McCune lines up. Top of your screen. Patterson looks for McCune, and that one sailing wide. Michigan will have to punt it away. Jeffrey Okuda defensively for Ohio State. Wolverines look out of sync on offense because not only is this Ohio State defense playing fast, they're educated. I think on that last play, Patterson was expecting that route to be broken off early. I think he was upset with his tight end that that route wasn't stopped early where he threw the ball. He looked almost indignant at the end of that. Will Hart from the 30. K.J. Hill, the deep man. And K.J. Hill has it at the 21. First down and 10 at the 21. The hot hand in that last series. Haskins was brilliant, Gus, on that last series. They gave it to J.K. Dobbins. And Dobbins knocked backwards. Some nice heat by the Michigan defense. Chase Winovich, who went out of the Indiana game last week with a shoulder or maybe neck injury. They didn't give us the full details, but he's playing today. Second and nine at the 22. Don Brown has made an adjustment. He's gone to more of his own style to try to give those defensive backs some help. Here's Haskins. Steps up in the pocket, wants to run it. Haskins slides down. Close to the first down again. Some timely running by Dwayne Haskins. Noah Furbush with the tackle. And now Urban Meyer is going to get a flag because he was all the way on the field wanting a penalty on this hit from Furbush as Haskins was sliding, giving himself up feet first. Meyer went all the way out on the field, and that's where the flag came out. Urban Meyer has to watch it. Those headaches are induced by his Leviathan. Please explain. Meaning, when he gets fired up, as opposed to stressed out, that's After when the, the headaches over, come. It's more something like conduct. Ohio State head coach. 15 yard penalty. Third down. Well, I certainly would side with Urban Meyer here. Dwayne Haskins had clearly given himself up, at least in my estimation, was going feet first. At that point, he's supposed to get defenseless player protection. Furbush came in. He clearly went after Haskins. Now, whether it was a target or not, that remains to be seen. But to me, it, it certainly should have drawn a flag. And then, see, watch right here. Haskins, he clearly kind of gives himself up, and Furbush goes in even high. He even leads with his helmet. He's contacting up in that shoulder, head, neck area, and that's what Meyer is so upset about. And on this case, I think I've got to agree with Urban Meyer. So that will make it third down and 17. From the 14-yard line for the Buckeyes, Haskins looking. And incomplete, thrown short and a flag. Intended for Alave, who has been Working hard on Brandon Watson. Pass interference. Defense number 28. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You see the hand, the grab of the jersey from Watson. Excellent call, clear call there. Absolutely defensive pass interference. Watson has been in the meat grinder right now. Partner, when he's on the field, they are attacking him. The reason I know that, Haskins has eight completions to seven different receivers. But how many times has 28 been in the crosshairs? Almost on every single one. Four or five different completions when Brandon Watson is in coverage. So wherever 28 is, that's where Haskins going with the ball. First down and 10 at the 30. Haskins. And it'll be tackled for and lost. Devin Bush along with Rashawn Gary with the sack. Now the chess match is going to start because Don Brown wants to play man coverage. He wants to pressure, and yet now he understands that he's got a weak link on the field. He's going to have to protect Brandon Watson and some of these man defenders on the outside, or else they're going to keep getting picked apart. Second and 15 of the 25. Empty backfield for Haskins. Haskins screen underneath. Caught Campbell. Paris Campbell bottled up. Looking for some daylight. Crosses the field. Paris Campbell down the sideline and out of bounds. What a run by Paris Campbell. 
A gain of 33. That was Houdini right there several times. Campbell does an outstanding job of avoiding the Viper back. Kalik Hudson right here. That's a tackle he really needed to break. And then now it's just slithering around, trying to find an open seam, and he's able to do so. First and 10 at the 42. For Ohio State. Leading it 14 to 6. Closing in on five minutes to go in the second quarter. Checking the play right now. Watch out right here. Askins on the give to Dobbins. Sean Gary coming up and making the tackle. With your right partner, I don't think Brandon Watson has the speed to hang with some of these shifty Ohio State wide receivers. And yet, here's the issue. As to what Michigan does, you know, the, the adjustment is out of their character to get into zone coverage. They're a better man team than they are in that zone game and now it's going to be Benjamin Victor lined up at the bottom of your screen. Victor dropped a big ball. A little while ago second and six at the 38. They swing it up Hill breaks the tackle and Hill. gains about three yards on the play Watson knocks him out of bounds. Lavert Hill great recognition there of what was going on in the backfield and he got back there but KJ Hill from Ohio State did an outstanding job of stepping out of that tackle and gaining positive yards to set up this more manageable situation for his quarterback Dwayne Haskins on a third down third down and three at the thirty five. Clock at five. The handoff to Dobbins and he'll pick up the first down. J.K. Dobbins, a sophomore from LaGrange, Texas. Tackled by Quiddy Pay. Check out the movement up front. These guys are getting better up front. The movement from all five offensive linemen winning the line of scrimmage, forcing them back, and Dobbins is able to just stay right behind them and move the chains. Prince, Knox, Michael Jordan, Malcolm Pridgen doing a great job. First down and 10 at the 31. Haskin sprinting out, sets up deep over the middle. Touchdown! Buckeyes, Johnny Nixon. Three passing touchdowns for Dwayne Haskins in the first half. And the Buckeyes take a 20 to 6 lead. What an outstanding job here of Dwayne Haskins recognizing that Michigan blows the coverage. You got three Wolverines with their eyes in the backfield. They don't put their eyes on Dixon. He's wide open and Haskins delivers it for another touchdown. This passing attack for Ohio State is something that the Wolverines have not seen all year long. Fourth in the country coming in. Haskins picking them apart. This game build as the number one overall defense versus the number two overall offense. Ohio State behind only Oklahoma. And right now they're showing their explosiveness. Javier. And good. 21-6. Trailing in the second quarter. People around here wondering what happened to the defense. Why can't we run the football? A lot of anxious Buckeye fans, but they're seeing their Buckeyes, and more importantly, this coaching staff, come here to play today. And it's contagious for the team as well. Haskins started four for nine since then. He's seven of his last eight. And Michigan will run it back and get to the 20-yard line. Amory Thomas tiptoes up the field, and that'll bring back on Shea Patterson, the Michigan offense. Struggling to find, I would say, a rhythm in yeah. this game, especially in the passing game. And, and I think that's because they're in obvious passing situations. They're not great in obvious passing situations. They're great when they can use play action in third and short, second and short, and get the ball to the tight ends. Their problem so far, Gus, they've had a lack of success on first down so far today running the football. That's where Ohio State is winning this game with their defense is the fact that Michigan is constantly behind schedule on their set of downs. Michigan with 110 yards of total offense. Ohio State with 234 from the 21. Patterson 
Sets up a screen. And he has McCune. Sean McCune picks up the first down as he's slung out of bounds by Damon Arnett. It's a really smart play call for Michigan. You got all that momentum and excitement. That defense has been flying around, and on first down, it's been run, 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 run. So what do they do? Invite that rush, get them up the field, drop a screen behind them for a nice conversion there. Gain of 11. First and 10 of the 32. Under three minutes of play in the first half. Patterson to the sideline. Donovan Peoples Jones with the reception. Nice open field tackle made by Jordan Fuller. And that's the best pass he's thrown all day. That one was on the money on the outside. You know, it's so interesting. It's like sometimes you've heard shooters in basketball say, all I need to do is like get a free throw or see one go in. Sometimes it's just the first one that comes off of your hand cleanly as a passer. It can put you in a rhythm. We'll see if Patterson can start to light it up here. Second and three of the 39. Patterson again drops it off down to the Peoples Jones. First down over Ridge. As Pete Werner brings him down. Peoples Jones, the leading receiver with 32 catches, coming into this game for 477 yards and seven touchdowns. Also had a punt return for touchdown against Nebraska. Heck of a player. Talented guy. First down at the 46. Patterson down the field. That one incomplete. Nico Collins, closest man to the football. Jeffrey Okuda, who they're really high on in Columbus defensively for the Buckeyes. And, and Okuda, I think the Michigan fans are going to want to call here, but the problem is is that you've got Collins with a fistful of jersey as well, and that ball was so far out of position. I don't think that Collins gets there anyways, even with the contact. Second down and 10. Evans running, and Evans, Malik Harrison has been lights out in this first half. He is playing with an energy and a recklessness, and it's guiding the way for the Buckeyes on defense. He's been outstanding. He's flying around, making plays, and making sure tackles. And here we go, another situation for the Buckeyes defense to get off the field. Third and nine at the 47. Michigan, four of nine on conversions. Patterson. Patterson looking and incomplete, but there is a fly. Tariq Black, the receiver, and looks like it's going to be either holding or interference against Arnett. I think you could call both on this one. Arnett was holding him off the line of scrimmage while the ball was in the air, all of the above. Pass interference, defense number three, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, now this Michigan offense, they've got to capitalize. On your right side, Tariq Black is trying to get back out to the corner. Call that a shake route. You go on the inside, almost up to the post, and then break it back out to the outside. Patterson trying to take him back out there, but Arnett was just holding him the whole time. Greciano. Defensive coordinator for Ohio State, former head coach at Rutgers and with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First and 10 of the 38. Michigan with a timeout. Patterson scrambles. Patterson runs it. And he'll get out of bounds at the 25. With the clock stopping at 55 seconds. Here's where experience pays off. Watch Patterson as he gets out of the pocket. He's going to break the pocket. I think right about here he knows he's going to run, but he pumps the ball anyways. That takes the defense and it puts their eyes on the wide receiver because they're in man coverage and they got to stay with their man. It probably gained him another five, six yards because he got those guys to start running with their men and he got down inside the 25 yard line. He picked up 15, first and 10 of the 23. Evans in motion. Patterson guns it and almost intercepted that ball thrown behind Ronnie Bell. Malik Harrison in the vicinity. That was dangerous. I mean, that was dangerous. First of all, you've got an Ohio State 
linebacker dropping back in coverage and he was right under that route. It's really tough to throw a slant into that tight of a window and Harrison was almost there for the turnover. Second down and 10 at the 23 yard line for the Wolverines. One time out remaining. Remember Ohio State will get the ball to start the second half. Patterson in the corner. Patterson, Nico Collins. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown, Michigan. Nico Collins went up and just got it. And the Wolverines get six. Wow. Wow. First, this ball is thrown perfectly, but watch Collins. Late hands. Wide receivers, that's te textbook. You see how he didn't go back up for that ball too soon and allow the defender Kendall Sheffield to go up and defend his hands. He gets back over that right shoulder. Oh my goodness. Great throw by Patterson. Maybe a better catch on the outside by Nico Collins. Moody in for the extra point. And it's good. Nico Collins the sophomore from Birmingham Alabama. Has caught a pass in 13 straight games going all the way back to the Outback Bowl in 2017. But that was a big touchdown for the Wolverines. Monster, monster touchdown. Urban Meyer and those Buckeyes had all the momentum, and Jim Harbaugh knew that they had to put a drive together, and they leaned on Shea Patterson in that pass game. And he put it on the money. Moody kicking it away to McCall. And McCall bounces off of his foot. And the Wolverines have My goodness. McCall was trying to fair catch that kick, and it just went right through the breadbasket. There's the fair catch symbol, and boom. And it goes right past the up back, and Michigan falls on it inside the 10. Oh, my goodness. Morning on the Michigan bench. There's no yardage penalty with that. First down, Michigan. And then the craze after the turnover, that announcement was just that there was a sideline warning on the Michigan bench. But oh my goodness, what a turn of events. Ohio State has done a wonderful job all first half long, offensively, defensively. And it's just been a couple of mistakes, a penalty here and there, a special teams error that's breathing new life for these Wolverines, a chance now to potentially tie it up before the half. Michigan with a timeout left. First and goal at the nine. Patterson drops it off wide open. Evans touchdown, Michigan. Wow. 21 to 19. 41 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They're just working on tough Borland, the linebacker, and watch as Evans is just going to get outside. Borland gets confused. He stops. He goes with the tight end wide open. Evans for a touchdown and in the span of two snaps of the football boom the Wolverines right back in it and it looks like Michigan will go for two two touchdowns for Michigan in six seconds again the third and final of the half 21 to 19 Ohio State leading Michigan but what a turn of events here in Columbus the Wolverines going for two Donovan Peoples-Jones in the backfield. Now they shift. Patterson sprints out. Patterson in trouble, and he's sacked. Shea Patterson couldn't get outside, and Jonathan Cooper, with great speed, denies it. And coming up at the half, Rob Stone, Matt Leiner, and Robert Smith, along with Dave Wonstadt, are standing by for the State Farm halftime show. What a show we've seen in the first half of this game. How about McCall back to receive this kick right after the mistake? Faith from Urban Meyer. Moody kicks it to McCall again, and this time he has it for the fair catch. With 41 seconds to go. Well, a great defensive play there on the two point conversion. 
by Pete Warner who was in man to man coverage and that's the only reason we got a two point game here in Ohio State. Boy they're going to feel really frustrated going in at halftime because they have dominated this game 234 offensive yards eight yards per play on only 29 snaps they do have two timeouts and 41 seconds here there's a chance with this matchup with Brandon Watson out there at cornerback for Michigan that they're going to try to get down the field and kick a field goal on first down run Mike Weber and Weber slung out of bounds by Devin Bush Wayne Haskins has had a big first half 11 of 17 188 yards passing three touchdown passes no interceptions and they've had things there with this scheme they've done a wonderful job with crossing routes Haskins and a fly. Benjamin Victor the intended receiver once again looks like they're picking on Brandon Watson Victor on the fade he did a nice job of setting Watson inside. Holding defense number 28. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. And then once he set him inside, watch as he's gonna just kind of come in and give a little inside move, and then he's back on the outside, and that's what induces the hold from Michigan. So a good route there for Benjamin Victor. 32 seconds remaining in the first half. Ohio State with the ball at their own 44. First down, Haskins. He's got the big arm and incomplete. Weber. Haskins throwing that one into double coverage. They had that matchup that they are liking right now, which is a running back against a linebacker. In this case, it was Mike Weber against Devin Bush. And Michigan has adjusted a little bit. Earlier in the game, it was Devin Gill, number 36. But now in this situation, they're trying to get their faster linebacker Devin Bush in the coverage opportunities on the backs. Ohio State needs to get to around the 30 yard line for field goal. And this one thrown high in the air and another flag. Johnny Dixon had a step. David Long covered him. You're seeing the speed of these Ohio State receivers. Pass interference. Defense number 22. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. And this is the MO for Michigan. You talk to any coach and they'll tell you that this is what these Michigan corners do. They grab constantly. They're grabbing, grab very handsy in the secondary. And if you can get the calls, you're going to have a great chance to get some big plays against Michigan because if they aren't allowed to play with their hands, they're not quite as good in the back end. 21 seconds remaining. Haskins. First and ten at the Michigan 41 empty backfield trips at the top There's a flag down here on this near side. I think there was a substitution issue. Illegal substitution 12 men in the formation on the defense five yard penalty. He makes first down. Boy, this Michigan defense, I have not seen them this out of sorts all year long. Give credit to this Ohio State offense because they have just put it on these Wolverines so far in the first half. Ryan Day, the offensive coordinator. Haskins going. Haskins! Caught McCall out of bounds. Inside the five. That's a gain of 32. You're going to get clearing routes here, and then you're going to get a wheel route down the sideline. Again, a linebacker in coverage, this time Bush, but McCall is faster than Weber or J.K. Dobbins. McCall beats him easily, and Haskins delivers just a beautiful pass down the sideline, right over his shoulder. First down and goal at the three. Buckeyes still have two timeouts left. Haskins has been a mastermind in this first half. Three passing touchdowns. I got a timeout. Before the foul, charge timeout. Ohio State, their second. This will be a 30-second timeout. 21-19, Ohio State. 
The Buckeyes somehow have zoomed down the field. Dwayne Haskins first and goal at the three. Weber in the backfield with him. Haskins drops it off. Weber. And he won't get in. Couldn't square his shoulders. Devin Bush, a remarkable play. Got all the way to the outside. Watch number 10 right here. He just gets enough of Weber to knock him out of bounds. And what a situation here. Still have a timeout left if you're Ohio State. So you can still run the football if they wanted to. And they might with Tate Martell, who's now in the game at quarterback. He's a dual threat player. Martell can run it. He's played in five games. Runs it to the corner. Martell breaks it inside and will not get in. And they'll need a timeout. They take it. With seven seconds to go, Michael Dwum four with the tackle for the Wolverines. Well, they're just going to try to get this going on the outside. And Martell is just a quarterback power. Mike Weber leading up there, but they don't get Noah Furbush blocked, number 59, and he's able to make the play. Tate Martell has not attempted a pass since the Tulane game. If I'm scouting Ohio State and I see him in the late season in the game, I've got to think it's a run. So with Urban Meyer's history with a guy that we all know named Tim Tebow, don't you think that if Martell is out there, this would be a great time for the little jump pass. Take that tendency and make it work for you. Get him towards the line of scrimmage. He can jump up and hit Luke Farrell or one of the tight ends, maybe even one of the wide receivers for an easy touchdown. But they're going to take Martell out, and Haskins is going to go onto the field. Remember, Haskins rushed for three touchdowns last week against Maryland. He's not afraid to stick his nose in it. Third and goal at the one. Haskins bobbled the snap, guns it. And it's caught. It looks like inside the one. Oh, the decision here. Now, what they're talking about is I thought Benjamin Victor, who made the catch, when he laid out, I did not think the ball was across the pylon, but if he was touching the pylon, the pylon's out of bounds, which Ruling would make this the incomplete. Field was an incomplete pass. See, watch as Benjamin Victor is coming back to the ball. And as he makes the catch, see, he's, he's all the way extended. Wow. And he does not have a body part down. As soon as he touched that pylon, that pylon's out of bounds, and that is incomplete. Remarkable catch. But that foot was not still in the end zone. The pylon then makes him out of bounds. Mike Pereira, our rules analyst, is with us in the booth. Mike, your thoughts? I think it's an, it's a, a, an incomplete pass. Obviously, even if it's reviewed, he didn't break the plane when he got control. So either way, they stay with this car. So Javier from 19 yards away, and it's good. The Buckeyes will take the points. That's the end. Urban Meyer heads into the locker room. Remember, his team, underdogs, coming into this game against fourth-ranked Michigan, but Ohio State with the lead, 24-19, and they'll get the ball to start the second half. So Ohio State, they won the toss, deferred, and the Buckeyes will receive it to start the second half. Dwayne Haskins has led the way for Urban Meyer's team. Haskins with three passing touchdowns in the first half, no picks. Jim Harbaugh. 0 and 3 against Urban Meyer. He was 2 and 0 as a player in this game. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Well, Gus, given the magnitude of this game, I was surprised by two very calm coaches that I caught up with at the half. I'm going to start with Urban Meyer. We walked off the field together, and overall, he said, my offense was incredible. What I saw from Dwayne Haskins, I need to see more of the same from that. The frustration came from the, quote, ridiculous mistake on special teams. For Coach Harbaugh, reminded of guys, we got 30 minutes of football. There are small adjustments I'm looking for. Shea Patterson's execution has been there defensively. We gotta pressure that quarterback. Get back to it, we'll be in a good place. First down and 10 at the 25. 
for Dwayne Haskins. Haskins will throw it on first down. Guns it over the middle incomplete. And how about that? The adjustment start. Gus, really the first snap I've seen all day where Michigan ran a zone defense, trying to protect those corners that were picked on early in that, in that first half. Don Brown is outstanding at making adjustments at halftime. Three different times this year, they've allowed 17 or more points in the first half. In those three games, they've allowed six total points in the second half. We'll see if he can adjust here against the Buckeyes. Second down and 10. Weber tried to break it back, stays on his feet. Weber still running, and it'll be tackled for a loss. But Rashawn Gary blew that play up for the Wolverines. Josh Ross. Medalists also in the vicinity. We'll see if this defense can put that pressure that Jim Harbaugh told Jenny that they needed if they can apply it on this third down. Loss of one, third down and 11 at the 24. Haskins. Over the middle. Caught first down. Paris Campbell and he gets more. Metellus with the tackle but it's an 18 yard gain. Watch how these routes start to clear out the zone and now all, you can, all of a sudden you're going to see a wide open zone right there and Haskins is able to exploit it because of the crossing route underneath. Campbell does a great job settling down and it's an easy conversion for Ohio State and the reason is no pressure. Haskins is able to go through the entire progression get to Campbell and make the conversion players coaches in the Michigan Ohio State series first and ten at the 42 Wayne Haskins hands it off Weber and Weber dragged down from behind Chase Winovich Talk about a man that plays with a tremendous motor. I mean, all the way around the edge. Watch, he's just going to continue to chase down Weber as he heads over to that right side, and he's able to just get him down to the ground. Came in, obviously, after having that injury last week against Indiana. Knew he wanted to go. He's been on the field the entire game. Hasn't been quite as productive as we've normally seen him, but he gets a big play there. Second down and 11 at the 41. Weber remains in the backfield. K.J. Hill in motion. Here's Haskins looking over the middle, and it's incomplete. Josh Metellus blew up the play. K.J. Hill couldn't hold on. Metellus all the way from his safety position. He understood where that ball was coming from. Haskins again with a crossing route, but this time Metellus makes the adjustment, and he flies up, and he's there to break it up as he hits K.J. Hill right in the back. When you see Ohio State running all these crossing routes, what's the adjustment that they need to make for Michigan to stop? I think it's that. The safeties have to get involved. They got have to get downhill and not allow that man coverage to just trail behind them. They've got to get over the top of that route. Third down and 11. Over the middle again and incomplete. Michigan ready. Harris Campbell. Couldn't hold on, and the Buckeyes will have to punt it away. Good series there from Michigan, and they are using some of these adjustments. Now what they're doing is they're playing man coverage on the outside, and on the interior, the inside receivers, they're playing what I would call kind of a two-over-one, so a little bit of a zone. Two players against one inside and out. That's making it tough on Dwayne Haskins right now. Chrisman punts it away for the third time. Peoples-Jones lets it go over his head and out of bounds. First down and 10 at the 20. Higdon lines up with Shea Patterson. Here's Patterson with time. Elects to run it. Throws to the sideline and incomplete. Nick Eubanks, the tight end, the intended receiver. So the Wolverines come into this game, winners of 10 straight. Jim Harbaugh commenting on the so called revenge tour. We're in playoff mode. That's our mindset. Playoff wins are big, so I'm really proud of the way we've approached this stretch of games. On to the next big game. Uh, this is certainly one of the most important halves of football that that man has coached in quite some time. He's got the favored team, a team that is veteran, a quality quarterback. He's got to pull out a victory here. Second down and 10. Higdon, Ohio State, ready for it. Chase Young, who had a huge game this year against Penn State. 
production down a bit, especially with the loss of Nick Bosa, arguably the best defensive player in college football. And this is where they've missed Bosa the most, these obvious passing situations. How do they get to the passer? Today they've done it with blitzing linebackers. Malik Harrison, Tuck Borland, trying to get free and get pressure on Shea Patterson. Third down and nine of the 21. Donovan Peoples-Jones lines up in the slot. Patterson drops it off. Hit that and he is stopped. Wade, Sean Wade, the freshman from Jacksonville, delivering the wood, and the Wolverines will have to punt it away. I tell you what, Sean Wade is one of these young safeties that has struggled tackling in space, but that was textbook. Helmet on the football, across the bow, as they say it, and right on top. So the Wolverines, Will Hart, punts it away from his own sixth, fourth punt of the game. K.J. Hill stands at the 35. This one angled to the far side. Hill from the 36. It's the sideline. And Hill. Ridden out of bounds. A 43-yard punt. And you got to get a lot of credit to this Ohio State offensive line. They have kept Dwayne Haskins clean for the most part in this game. First and 10 at the 42. And Dobbins popping forward. Well, this defense. Certainly changing things up. They've gone to a three-man defensive front. Only three defensive linemen in the game. Now they're not lined up at the snap. Michigan not ready. Devin Bush can't make the tackle, and it's a first down for the Buckeyes. Nice run there for Dobbins, and a nice shot by Dwayne Haskins. Sometimes at the, at the quarterback position, the tendency is to allow the defense to get set so your guys can get targeted. But Haskins just snaps it anyways, knows he's going to hand it off, and then Dobbins with a nice physical run getting away. And Dobbins running it again. Rashawn Gary with the tackle. Dobbins last week against Maryland ran for a career high 203 yards on 37 carries and a touchdown. But going back to what you said, that offensive line has been the key to the game. Not necessarily what they've done in the run game, but keeping Haskins clean when he wants to throw it. Second and eight at the 45. Offensive line under a lot of pressure this year. They've been criticized an awful lot. And right now they're turning in a terrific performance against the number one defense in the country. Dobbins bursting through first down. Buckeyes O line creating space first and ten at the 36. Cerebral, patient, pumps, looks, underneath again, complete, Campbell down the sideline, Paris Campbell knocked out of play by Tyree Kittle. But right now, Dwayne Haskins is in complete control. All he's got to do is have the time to complete those crossing routes. And if he's got time, they are just killing him right now with these routes. Here it's coming from the left. Haskins is totally clean, and he delivers a perfect pass. When it's out in front of the face mask of Campbell, Campbell is able to get the yards after the catch. Here's the combination for a quarterback. Timing plus ball placement equals yards after the catch. He threw it on time, perfectly placed for the wide receiver, and it's a big game for the Buckeyes. Can I add? Add receivers with blinding speed. Yeah, exactly. Tate Martell, Gus, in the ball game for Ohio State. Likes that read option. First and goal at the five. Martell bottled up. Martell taken down behind the line of scrimmage. You know, they, they got to throw out of that. There, there is no threat right now to that defense throwing the ball. Again, Tate Martell has not attempted a pass since the two lane game that was two months ago and so with him in there Michigan can just put all their resources up against the run they've got to try a pass here second and goal at the five 
Martell hands it off. Dobbins gets to the two. That brings up third and goal from the two. And Martell stays in the game. Let's see if they do it here. Farrell, 89, the tight end. Watch if he slips past the defense on the right side. Third and goal of the two. Martell runs it. No, hands it off. And Dobbins does not get back to the line of scrimmage. So the Michigan defense holds. And the question is, will Urban Meyer go for it on fourth down? Well, they just stuck with it, trying to trust that offensive line, but Michigan got lower. What an excellent job down low from the Michigan defensive line to win the line of scrimmage. Winovich all the way under the pile, making a play. Haskins will come onto the field. No, nope, he came on just shortly, but now the field goal unit, Gus, is going to come on the field. And number two for Michigan, Carlo Kemp, really submarining and making that play. So Blake Hobiel nails the field goal from 19 yards out. 8.25 to go third quarter. Two of the legends in college football coaching and Urban Meyer and Jim Harbaugh following in those footsteps. Meyer such a great champion coach three national championships Jim Harbaugh a sensational player at Michigan and in the NFL let's see if his team can make some adjustments as they step out of bounds Aubrey Thomas oh what a mistake that ball is flying out of bounds, and Michigan would get it all the way at the 35-yard line. He catches it and steps out, and the Wolverines will start inside the 10. Oh, my goodness, what a mistake. The, I mean, if he's going to catch it, he's got to fair catch it because he's given up just miles of yardage. Coach Arbaugh, Shea Patterson can't believe it. Backed up against the wall again. First down and 10 of the eight. Higdon. And Higdon with a first down. And that's what you want if you're the University of Michigan. Tough Borland, Brendan White with the tackle, but that's to have a big gain on first down, 14 yards. And what we've seen and what this coaching staff for Michigan has talked about is that they feel like they're tempo their run game is going to pay dividends starting the second drive of the third quarter that's when they'll start to pop some runs maybe some play action and that ground and pound style finally starts to loosen up the defense the cue in motion first and ten of the 22 and it's Evans and Evans knocked down by guess who Malik Harrison he has been a standout since the very beginning of this game on defense for Ohio State. He had double digit tackles against Nebraska, but it didn't feel like this. They weren't right at the line of scrimmage. He's had several tackles for loss. He's been in the backfield forcing pressure on Shea Patterson. He has played Malik Harrison sensational today. Second and 10 of the 22. Patterson. In trouble and sacked again. Third sack of the day for Ohio State. The Buckeyes with so much pressure this time. Jonathan Cooper comes up big. I mean, you can give a lot of Buckeyes the credit for this. Watch the relentless nature with which this defensive line, as well as the linebackers, are flying around Patterson, including 32 tough Borland, making this a really tough, obvious passing situation. Not what you want if you're Shea Patterson and the Wolverines. Ohio State is 24th nationally, coming into this game with 80 tackles for a loss. Third and 13. At the 19-yard line. Ohio State backs off the pressure. Patterson up and incomplete, but a flag. Sean Wade covering Jake McCurry. Hey, 
Pass interference. Defense number 24. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. McCurry is not a guy that they target a lot. He had a touchdown against Western Michigan all the way back in September, but there, Patterson goes to him with the one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's a terrific call. Wade just did not allow him to make an adjustment to the ball. And McCurry's trying to come back into the inside. And Wade is right there, clearly interfering. Wolverines catch a break. Fresh set him down. He's at the 34. Higdon. Nothing. Harrison. Devon Hamilton. Both in on the play. I mean, look at Harrison. I just love what he is doing right now. He's not committing too early. See, he slow plays it, slow plays it. Then when the hole opens up and Higdon chooses where he wants to go, guess who's there to meet him? Number 39 for the Buckeyes. Higdon, 12 carries, 47 yards. He's averaging 3.9 yards per carry with a long of 15. Second and nine at the 35. Patterson over the middle. Eubanks breaks a tackle but just gets back barely to the line of scrimmage. A gain of one. That'll bring up third and long. Check out the pressure. This is why he cannot wait for the player that's in the middle of the field. He's going to have a wide open tight end 84 over the middle of the field, but he can't get it to McCune because of the pressure in his face. That's what Ohio State has to do here on third down. Put pressure in the face of Shea Patterson. He has not dealt with it so far well today. And they've been able to get home several times. Third down and eight at the 36. Buckeyes look like they're coming again. Patterson over the middle. Incomplete. Zach Gentry couldn't hang on, and the Wolverines will have to punt. He shorted Gentry. He did this last week on a sure touchdown. Gentry was wide open down the seam for Shea Patterson. And Patterson locates him. He's got him. He had the protection, but he just shorted him. If he just puts that ball up onto the frame, it's a conversion for the Wolverines. Will Hart punting for the fifth time. At his own 21, K.J. Hill at the 20. And it's blocked. Check it out, Cameron Babb. He's coming around, coming around, and then he's wide open in the middle, and he gets it off of Hart's foot. What a block. Extra point, good. 34 to 19, they're surfing here <laughs> in Columbus. I don't know if this kid signed up for this, but he's going along for the ride. Give me down, give me down. Oh, and he's down. Oh my goodness. They're loving it here in Columbus, folks. Buckeyes. 34-19 over Michigan. Wolverines start from the five with Thomas. And he gets out of bounds. Pump return team, and that was Greg Schiano's design. A couple of weeks ago, he took over that punt return unit, the defensive coordinator, and he is now designed a couple of blocks in the last few weeks and none bigger than that, that one by freshman wide receiver Cameron Babb who was able to get in there and block that kick. Here's a handoff. Higdon and he goes nowhere. Chase Young. Remember last week Maryland freshman Anthony McFarland ran for 298 yards against the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes gave up five plays of more than 50 yards. Asked to characterize the discussion with the defensive coaches this week, Urban Meyer said it was uncomfortable and direct. Can I add something? Yes. It worked. Urban Meyer 
A masterful psychologist. Second and 12. Patterson under pressure. And incomplete. That brings up another third down. Situation. Third down and 12 of the 18. Shea Patterson. Empty backfield. Patterson. Bounces out of the pocket. Pursued. And intercepted. Fuller. Ohio State has it again. Michigan unraveling. There was also a hold inside by the Michigan offensive line. I think Chase Young actually got his arm. Watch Chase Young. He's going to be coming around here. Watch as Patterson's trying. I think he's trying to throw this away, and I think he gets his arm just as he lets it go. It flutters, and then that's how Jordan Fuller is able to come down with the ball. Only the fifth interception thrown by Shea Patterson all season long in this Buckeye defense. They came to play today. Coming into this game, Urban Meyer said about the defense, I've done this for a long time. We've had situations where one side is not playing very well. Is the defense where we need it to be? It's not, but we're 10 and 1, and we're going to try to become 11 and 1. Haskins dumps it off. KJ Hill pushed out of bounds, short of the goal line. They keep faking the crossing routes because they're having so much success on the crossing routes in the general sense of play. Watch as he can come all the way in the inside. Stop right there. Now he's back on the outside. Hill does a great job with the route. Haskins does a great job with the read. A foot just out before he was able to reach for the pylon. First down and goal at the two. Weber in the backfield. He'd love to score against his home state team. Option. Weber. Touchdown Buck. We've been waiting all year long for Ohio State to play their best game of the year. Well, under Urban Meyer, they wait for the final game against their arch rivals in the game. Buckeyes blowing the Wolverines away now. And this is the biggest Michigan deficit of the year. Extra point, good. Ohio State on top of Michigan, deep in the third quarter, all smiles on that Buckeye sideline. In every aspect, outside of the special teams miscue, that, that mucked kick, this has just been masterful. And you know, I mean, the players have played great, but the game plan has just been outstanding from this coaching staff. This one kicked into the end zone for a touchback. And you have to give credit to Urban Meyer. What a challenging season it's been for Coach Meyer. Suspended for the first three games by the university after his handling of the domestic assault allegations against former wide receivers coach Zach Smith. When it came under scrutiny during the three game suspension, one of the best players in college football, Nick Bosa, lost for the year. He gets back. Now he has to deal with a first-year sophomore starting quarterback that's a pro-style quarterback. He had to change his entire style. And that doesn't include his own health issues. Drew Wilson. Urban Meyer with the cyst in his brain. It can't be drained anymore because of where it's located. So he has to take medication. He has to calm down. You see him rubbing his head often. And you just wonder how long he could continue to coach. His doctors are concerned. Second and six at the 29. Michigan with only 16 yards in the quarter. Patterson delivers and caught at midfield. Nice catch by Donovan Peoples-Jones as he plucked that one off the turf. Boy, another 
throw that was short. Peoples Jones just keeps it off the turf. What a sensational catch there. Was wide open. Probably could have run for a lot more if that ball is out in front of him. Right now, Shea Patterson just can't find a rhythm. And he can't find a rhythm because of that pass rush. It seems like every time he drops back to pass, he's got one or two Buckeyes pounding him. Credit defensive line coach Larry Johnson. First and ten at the 49. Patterson near side and another catch. Nico Collins. On the other side of this, Ohio State has played so well. Yes, that's true. If I'm Shea Patterson and Jim Harbaugh, I say, hey, there's a lot of time left. 22. All right, three possessions. We're going to have plenty of possessions left. We just got to go take care of business. And Patterson's actually putting together his best drive here. And again, like I told you in the first half, you can only take one completion, and all of a sudden you get some rhythm. Let's see if that rhythm is continued during the plus side of the 50. First down to the 38. Shea Patterson. Sideline. Incomplete. And a flag. Nico Collins. Sheffield covering Kendall Sheffield the junior from Missouri City Texas pass interference defense number eight 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down you know what what they're gonna get here is watch as his right arm and he's just kind of holding that chicken wing see how he's just got he's he's holding Nico Collins with that right arm I know it wasn't a ton of contact, but he is impeding the wide receiver's route to the ball. And that's a flag. I know that's frustrating for Buckeye fans, but that's actually textbook by the officials. Excellent call out there. You just figure, though, at this point, partner, Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator for Michigan, has to open this thing all the way yeah, up. You're right. First down, True Wilson. Wolverines unable to run it on first down consistently against this. Larry Johnson coach defensive line yeah, this this coaching staff for this defense they put in Yeoman's work this week and they needed to get right because last week oh my goodness you turn on the film and it was big play after big play after big play five plays of 50 or more yards Maryland had last week scoring 51 points and Greg Shiano knew he had to get some things fixed and he's certainly done that great thing about that game for Ohio State Maryland scored 51. The Buckeyes scored 52. <laughs> That's right. Second and nine at the 22. Patterson. Eubanks. Nick Eubanks with a nice catch in traffic to gain seven yards. Tough Borland. Partner, is this Michigan defense built to keep pace with? This kind of Ohio State offense? Actually, yes. I mean, Don Brown's defense is built to face the spread offense. The problem is, is these injuries have taken their toll on that side. They've got a starting corner out. They've got Devin Bush out. And right now, without their great personnel, that's why they've been struggling. Third and two at the 15. They swing it out. Peoples Jones still on his feet. And Donovan Peoples Jones lunges forward and gets the first down. I mean, what a run. Unbelievable run after the catch to end the third quarter. Wolverines with the football first down and 10. At the Ohio State 12. They stay on the ground with True Wilson. And True Wilson just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Pete Werner on defense. Got to get some sort of quick score. They're in a three possession game right now and this is not a quick strike offense so you can't expect that you're going to have the football three or four more times so getting this into the end zone quickly is of the utmost of importance here for Michigan. Second down and 10 at the 12. Evans in motion out of the backfield. Patterson throws to the corner. Nico Collins goes up and has his second touchdown of the day. No, they call it incomplete. Kendall Sheffield knew it. They went to that play earlier 
And Collins made a sensational catch for the touchdown. There he goes up. Looks like he's got it, but then in the fight on the ground. Boy. I don't know. That sure looks like he controls it there. There's a foot down, so now he just has to survive the ground. Doesn't look like that ball moved. That looked like a touchdown. That's to absolutely me. a touchdown. Control. Foot down. Now survive the ground. The ruling on the field on the previous play is an incomplete pass. The play is under further review. So they'll That's take a look good. at. Oh, this there's one. the bobble. There's the bobble. Wait, did you see it under that? At that, the end. That at the very end. That was the angle that the ball actually popped loose, and it looked like. Mike Pereira is replaying it right now. Michael, what do you think? Well, first of all, this is a player going to the ground, so he has to survive the ground, so to speak. But to me, he has control, maintains control after he hits the ground, and then it gets pulled out. So, to me. I, I like this more of a touchdown than I do an incomplete pass because it's pulled out after he has basically slid out of bounds. Because it's not the ground causing Correct. the lack of control, but rather Kendall Sheffield. Now, when's the point of demarcation, Mike? Because that's what I think I would be confused about, and most fans would be confused about the point between when it has to be the ground versus Sheffield. When's the timing? Where that ends and you say touchdown. To me, did the did the ball did the ball come out? Did the ground cause the ball to come out? And if it's the defender that pulls it out after that, here it comes. After review, the receiver gained control of the pass in the end zone, came down for a touchdown. Nice job, guys. Thank you, Mike. Mike. Nico Such Collins a, with his second touchdown. And just, a, I mean, what a resource to have Mike there. Obviously, with Sheffield pulling that ball out, great catch by Nico Collins. The, I'm sure for the Buckeye fans, they'll consider, they'll scratch their head and be like, so wait. <laughs> <laughs> a catch is not a, if we get into that. Yeah. But it's certainly nice having Mike Pereira here to help us clarify things. So Michigan will go for two, down 41 to 25 as we start the fourth quarter. Jay Patterson under center this time. Patterson to Collins, Collins, and he won't get in. Tough Borland. Jonathan Cooper denies him. Kendall Sheffield there as well. Two touchdowns of the day by Nico Collins. Jim Harbaugh says, out of boy. Well done. A lot of work to do. I, I'm not sure I agree with that two point attempt there. You know, if he kicks it, it's still a 15 point game. And at that point, because he only has to go for two one more time. You know, now that he went for it there, now if they score again, they're forced to go for two the rest of the way out in order to draw even with Ohio State. So chasing points, I don't think, pays off right there for Jim Harbaugh. Demario McCall. And McCall. Wrestled down at the 21. This is our third Ohio State game this year. We had him at Minis against Minnesota at home. Golden Gophers gave him a run as they run it with Paris Campbell down the sideline. Watch out! Campbell turns on the juice. Touchdown, Buckeyes. 78 yards. No flag. What a day for Paris Campbell. Oh, you want to see what speed does to you? Check out the safety in the back end. That's Josh Metellus. He's got the angle, and right here, Campbell just says, uh oh, I am gone down the sideline. Speed kills, and Campbell uses it to get to the end zone. 47 to 25, Ohio State. Javier with the extra point. Paris Campbell, his third career rushing touchdown. He has four catches for 98 yards and a 78 yard rushing touchdown. The most points scored since 2000. The most points scored all time against Michigan 50, and they've got 48 today, excuse me. And 
Thomas will return it. And Thomas finally taken down at the 12. Justin Hilliard with the tackle. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Tab. Well, Gus, this game, this rivalry, it's meant that much more for Paris Campbell as an Akron, Ohio native. He talked about it this week, saying, I never thought the day would come. I'd have my last game playing at the shoe. But the hurdles are all year, the adversity we have gone through. Everything is right in front of us. Everyone doubts us. We're just waiting to show everyone what we've been doing. And we are seeing that from Paris Campbell, from these receivers who have been a difference for this team. And all season long. Ohio State, when they would struggle and play down to the level of their competition, the fans were not happy as Patterson rolls out and slides down. When you look back, they beat Penn State 27-26, came back to beat them on the road. And then Indiana, Minnesota, they struggled a little bit with the Golden Gophers, 30-14. Then they laid an egg at Purdue, 49-20, came back, Nebraska battled them. 36-31 Buckeyes won it. They beat Michigan State handily. And then last week, the 52-51 game at Maryland scared the bejesus out of every Ohio State fan. But won't it Urban Meyer tell everybody, hey, we're still 10 and 1, looking for a way to get to 11. And they certainly look like they found that way. Second and four at the 20. Evans, first down. Well, now the urgency has been heightened severely for Michigan. They've got a score with still somewhere in the 11 minutes, 10 and a half minutes left in this ball game to have what I would call a legitimate chance in this fourth quarter. The problem is, is they just cannot stop Ohio State. And Jim Harbaugh, he knows that the adjustments have not worked. The injuries have taken their toll on this Michigan team during the course of the game. And the game plan for Ohio State has been master class. First down to the 26. Patterson under pressure again and just gets rid of it. I'll tell you, this front seven for Ohio State. They played some boss football today. Well, they told us that they were starting to get healthier and they felt like their best football was ahead of them, and that has certainly been the case. What they have done is they've been able to get to the quarterback, and it's not necessarily the number of times that they've gotten him for a sack because they haven't gotten him down for a sack but it's the pressure getting him off of his spot getting him out of rhythm whether it's the linebackers on a blitz or chase young around the edge they have certainly done a masterful job today making chase Shea Patterson field goal presence second and ten of the 26 Higdon and Higdon pops one free Higdon gets the midfield before being taken out of bounds by Brendan White for the first time all day you see a linebacker for Ohio State get out of position watch here Pete Werner he's gonna go and he's gonna flow too far over to his right and boom that's where the cutback happens behind him and Higdon's able to find the hole and get a big run up the field that's what we saw time in and time out last week against Maryland is those linebackers getting out of their gap but they have not done that thus far today they need to get back to that base defense Higdon with a 24 yard gain 15 carries 72 yards for Higdon first down at the 50 Patterson Patterson in trouble got it away to Ronnie Bell at the last moment and the Wolverines pick up the first down Jay Patterson so courageous to wait until the final second to throw that ball you ain't lying because this Pete Warner was right in his chest and he basically has a little jump pass like a fadeaway over there to Ronnie Bell. First down to the 39. And near side, Oliver Martin. Flag down. Jake McCurry is going to get called for a hold there on the outside, the wide receiver, number 43. Holding offense number 43. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. As they're trying to run this screen on the outside, 
There's 43. He's working against Damon Arnett, and McCurry just kind of holds him and drags him down, and that official right there was all over it, and the flag came out right away. So first and 16 from the Ohio State 45. Patterson, Patterson in trouble. And incomplete, flag on the play, Peoples Jones. And that might be Arnett again, or either Jordan Fuller. And Fuller was covering Peoples Jones. Patterson was in the backfield from the ground. That's an offense. Defense number four. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Jonathan Cooper, number 18, had the pressure on Patterson. He saw it right there. See him peek down. He knew he had to get rid of it soon. And there's the grab from Fuller on the jersey of Donovan Peoples Jones. He was looking for the flag and obviously got it. Ohio State has not played clean as far as penalties. It's been everything else. Ten penalties so far for 125 yards. But Urban Meyer has to like their aggressiveness, especially on defense. First and ten at the 30. Shea Patterson. That one thrown low. Peoples Jones looks like he cradled it. And they'll give him the catch. A 20 yard gain. Uh, he had to come back to this again. Again, Patterson shorts him severely. He's basically wide open. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get that catch because that ball certainly touched the ground as he was trying to gain control. I think that they're going to review this and this is going to turn in incomplete. We saw last week against Indiana. Really a lot of short throws. The receiver caught the and pass. especially when guys would pop wide open, review. the scheme would be perfect. They would run the correct route. Peoples Jones there wide open. If that ball is out in front of him on his chest, he's probably going to have a good chance to get to at least the one yard line, probably the pylon for a touchdown. But he shorts him completely, and that ball certainly touched the ground, and I expect this to be an incompletion. Fans reacting to it as they look on the. What do you call them? Do you still can, can you still call them a jumbotron? Or is, are there new names for that now? I mean, the size of some of these things is like the super giant jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> right. As always, here with this fantastic crew, just unbelievable shots from our camera guys who work tirelessly all year long to bring you college football all over it. Excellent job, guys. Patterson, he knows it too. He was in the backfield, Gus, and he put his hands over his head. And it's that little bit of indecision as a quarterback, that little bit of doubt. Maybe it's the pass rush, maybe it's not setting your feet all the way, trying to guide the ball. It's like a pitcher that can't find the strike zone. The worst possible thing you can do is start to guide the ball to where you want it to go. You got to let it rip, and he has not done that, at least consistently today. Michigan coming into Columbus looking to win for the first time since the 2000 season. After review, the pass is ruled incomplete. It will be second down and 10 at the 30 yard line on hash number one. Please yeah. reset the game clock to 1046. 1046, please. It's not just because Mike Pereira is here that I'm going to do this, but Jim Kimmerling, the replay official, has had an outstanding game. He has been all over it from the replay booth, which is always so great to get when you get a game of this magnitude and scope. These officials, I feel like, have done a pretty good job. So that makes it second and ten at the 30-yard line for the Wolverines. Battered and bruised with 10.46 to go in the fourth. Patterson. Jay Patterson spins out of trouble. And incomplete. Chase Young was right in his hip pocket. 
Boy, it's been somebody on every snap. This time it is Young. Young's all the way on the right side. Watch here, he's going to come. And then right here, he scopes out. And now he's going to come and get into the face of Shea Patterson. Just a relentless pass rush from these Buckeyes all day long. Third down and 10. Patterson off his back foot and complete to Donovan Peoples Jones for first down. I mean, even the success that Michigan is having is coming so difficult. Patterson back foot having to jump, hitting Peoples Jones across the middle. Seven catches, 64 yards for Peoples Jones. First down at the Buckeye 19. Patterson running it and he is gobbled up on Thanksgiving weekend by Jonathan Cooper, but a flag. And Patterson is hurt. Brandon Peters comes in a quarterback. He'll throw it on his first touch over the middle. Evans. Let's see, no signal, and they say he's short by about six inches. Well, you talk about a tight window throw for your first throw off the bench. Peters is able to fit that ball into Evans, and Evans, that ball just not quite to the goal line, it appears, before that knee comes down. But I'm sure they're going to take another really look at this because it was awfully was close. Short of the goal line. That play is under further review. So Brandon Peters has played in three games now, his fourth. To an interception on his only pass attempt prior to this completion to Chris Evans. And so let's see if that ball breaks the plane before the knee. There's the knee. Oh boy, that's going to be close. I don't. I don't think that there's enough to overturn that to a touchdown. It looks like he's short. Boom. Yeah. I mean, ever so slightly. My career. I always agree with my man Joel Klatt, by the way, and I'm going to stand by him on this one, too. That right knee is down before the ball breaks the plane. Understand why Jim Kimmerling stopped it. Scoring play, but uh, it will stay short. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was short of the goal line. All right, so I gave you, remember, Gus, that 10-minute mark, kind of a, a point of demarcation, and we're at 9.45 now, so... There's still life. I know it's not a lot of life right now, but Shea Patterson on the bench, getting that right leg looked at. Peters now comes out, gets one completion. They can punch it in quickly. At least there's life for the Wolverines. And Mason, they give it to him straight ahead, and it's a touchdown for the Wolverines. And Mason. Makes it a 48-31 game, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Boy, they get into this situation. It's usually been Mason time, and it was again there. It's just almost like a quarterback sneak with the fullback, just wedge blocking up front. Mason's able to sneak into the end zone, and Michigan at least has some form of life. Jake Moody in for the extra point. And it's good. 48-32. 48 to 32, Ohio State on top of the Michigan Wolverine. Been all Buckeyes there. I think that that intro just burned uh, in the hearts of a lot of fans out there. Been hearing that song all my life. <laughs> <laughs> As Moody sends it away. It's fair caught at the five. Let's check in with Jenny Tab. Well, a quick turnaround for Shea Patterson. He was being evaluated for that right knee, but they put a brace on. They put some adhesive on there. He'd been testing his mobility on the sideline, doing a few sprints, fast movement, telling everyone he wanted to get back in there. And as far as the other injuries we've seen today for the Wolverines, just an update. Devin Bush, it was a thigh injury. Zach Gentry, he was being evaluated upstairs, but it looks like Patterson will give it a go. All right, Jen, thank you very much. Michigan with life, down 48 to 32, but they have to figure a way to stop Dwayne Haskins.
Haskins and this Buckeye offense Farrell still on his feet he'll get close to the first down that's and that's the problem is trying to stop this offense this offense has put up 459 yards of offense they're averaging over eight and a half yards per play I mean the, the production against the number one defense in America has just been amazing first and ten of the 35 Haskins again Haskins running it Haskins dives forward and picks up a first down. I tell you what, Dwayne Haskins is getting faster as this season's going on. And the urgency with which he plays when the pocket breaks down has become better and better. And that's the mark of getting more experience and the urgency to know from his coaching staff that, hey, sometimes you've got to be a runner. And he has certainly heeded that advice. First down and 10 of the 46. First year starter, Dwayne Haskins took over. For JT Barrett. Remember, in this game last year, he came in for an injured Barrett and led the way. And you could see the future. Haskins. Weber. First down. Weber. Down to the 23. And a flag on the play. Tyree Kennel with the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 23. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Tell you what, you got Wyatt Davis, you got Michael Jordan, and you got Malcolm Bridgen doing an outstanding job right here. Guard, center, guard, get the tackle, both tackles, and the linebacker blocked up. Everybody's covered up. Mike Weber finds the seam and is able to get way down the field before getting that face mask grabbed just at the end of that play. Weber dressed but did not play last week in Maryland due to a quadricep bruise suffered in practice. Buckeyes first and 10 at the Michigan 13. Weber looking for a second touchdown. A whirling dervish as he gets to the five. When we saw these rugged yards from Mike Weber against Michigan State and how about this Dwayne Haskins has now put together the single season record for passing yardage in Big Ten history passing Curtis Painter and Drew Brees what a sensational season it's been and Dwayne I know it looks like you got one more left but my man I think you belong in New York I would agree second and two from the five Weber gets the first down at the Michigan one and a half would he pay with the saving tackle Gus you think about this season that they've had the suspension of their head coach the injuries to some of their best players you got the offensive line developing all season very criticized trying to find the identity the defense struggling all of that and you know what it's about to come to a head this could be the exclamation point of one of the great performances in the game's history first and goal at the one. Haskins throws touchdown KJ Hill and Dwayne Haskins breaks Drew Brees' 1998 Big Ten record with his 40th touchdown pass of the season. He better go to New York. Doesn't get any better than this. If you're an Ohio State fan, Dwayne Haskins, what a remarkable performance. Came in to face the number one pass defense in America, and he's thrown now for three bills and four touchdowns. Extra point is good. Most single season touchdown passes in Big Ten history. Dwayne Haskins, the sophomore from Potomac, Maryland, is at the top of the table, passing Drew Brees with 40. You know what's been so impressive though about those 40 is that because they've been in these games where they've been behind in the second quarter and having to come back last week down 14 three different times Gus he's had to have them there haven't been a ton of garbage points for Ohio State this year because of the year that they've had.
they've been important touchdown passes and this guy Dwayne Haskins at times has carried this Buckeye team to this point and they've answered and they followed their leader number seven to the point where today they put together their best performance of the year and you have to give a lot of credit to Ryan Day the offensive coordinator he comes from the Chip Kelly school of offensive football and he's mentored this young man and has turned him into a juggernaut there was a little five there from JT Barrett his quarterback last year and again we've talked a lot today about this identity crisis that they've had there's JT and he fit exactly what the Urban Meyer blueprint was that running quarterback that had the ability to throw the ball but in short yardage was the guy that they would rely on to run the ball Dwayne Haskins is not that player but they found their way Patterson back in the game and this one short coming into the game this was the seventh time Ohio State have been an underdog in any game under Urban Meyer the Buckeyes won the previous six well, and it's been 51 times and I got to tell you we we talked about this you and I last night we we're sitting in the hotel and we said have you ever met with Urban Meyer and his staff when they felt that relaxed before a big exactly game? they looked so relaxed yesterday almost like hey no one expects us to play great but we know we're going to play great and they certainly did that today and how about the sun starting to shine on these Buckeyes here in the shoe after pouring 55 on the Wolverines that man is one of the greatest coaches in the history of this college game men like him don't come around very often and quite frankly he was a little disappointed when they were a one loss team and still getting so much criticism about the way they were playing yeah. even though they were winning and being an underdog in this game Urban Meyer said it's not about who's favored and who's not we have a saying around here that the most prepared team will win the game if anyone is paying attention to who's favored they're looking at the wrong thing 656 to go 55 32 the committee has to pay a lot of attention to this game especially for next week Joe Milton has checked in at quarterback for Michigan Milton throwing it strong arm and picked off wow Brendan White still on the move down the sideline and out of bounds inside the five The wheels have officially come off for Michigan. There's over 100,000 here watching this dominant performance. There's millions around the world watching this dominant performance. My question is, are the 13 right people watching this dominant performance? Because this team has been evaluated based on their past. And they've been put in the 10th spot in those After playoff the plays rankings. over on sportsmanlike conduct. Defense number four. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first down Ohio State. They've been evaluated based on their past. You come around here and they're like, hey, why don't we get the benefit of the doubt that Oklahoma does? Our defense is better than Oklahoma's, and we have a great offense. Why don't we get the benefit of the doubt like they do up in those rankings? And I think that there's a lot to think about now. I know there's a lot of people around the country in Norman, Oklahoma, maybe in Orlando, UCF fans that are really happy with this result today. But I think that committee is going to have to take a serious look at Ohio State now and reevaluate what this team is after this performance here late in the season. Boy, it sure feels like them pouring it on late in 2014, doesn't it? Yes. As the Buckeyes run it with J.K. Dobbins. If the Buckeyes hold on and win this game, they'll take on Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship. They haven't played Northwestern since 2016, a 24 to 20 win here in Columbus. Ohio State has beat Northwestern six in a row and 30 of the last 31 going back to 1972. I'll be looking to win the Big Ten title for a second straight year. Haskins has thrown four touchdowns. Can he make it five? They run it. Dobbins. 
you look at the current rankings right now you've got a win over a Penn State team. This is a win over the number four team in the country and many thought we're playing some of the best football out there at the number one defense in the country and this team put over 500 yards next week would be an opportunity to have another ranked win and so Washington, all of a sudden Washington State lost Washington State loses last night LSU I don't think is going to be much of a factor and the reason is those two losses and they're certainly not going to win their division as Alabama has already wrapped that up. Here's Haskins guns it touchdown. This kid, Dwayne Haskins, as Paris Campbell catches the touchdown. No, he's not Tim Tebow. He's not Braxton Miller. He's not Alex Smith. He's not JT Barrett. He's more like Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. Six feet three, 215 pounds with a whip. Urban Meyer and his offensive staff made the adjustment. They've embraced the pocket passer. And with 526 to go, they've hung 62 points on their arch rival. And this sophomore quarterback has thrown five touchdown passes and 318 yards passing. A big old debate between the Oklahoma Sooners and the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's right. A debate on many levels. Off air caught inside the five. Does this move him past Kyler Murray? Well, that Haskins that putting up tough. these kind of numbers. A 300 yard game and five touchdowns against the number one defense in the country. I, I, I think it gets him very much in the conversation going into this week when you're talking about and you're talking about the Heisman Trophy. I thought that there was two very clear leaders Tua Tonga Bailoa and Kyler Murray. The other three that were involved in the conversation were Gardner Minshew Dwayne Haskins and Greer. Greer. Well Minshew and Greer both lost. And Haskins did this. Now I think that you've got three quarterbacks in conference championship games next week. And boy. I mean I know two has had a great season but this has been a record setting season for Haskins Kyler Murray obviously is doing something that no other player in the history of the sport has ever done averaging over 300 pass yards and 60 rushing yards per game. Joe Sean Wade that's the second big stick he's had today. Sean McHugh. Caught that one. The hard way. Listen to this place. And there, there's not an empty seat. In 1985, Iowa coach Hayden Fry complained that the crowd here was too loud for his quarterback Chuck Long to call plays. He suggested that penalties be assessed to the Buckeyes if it got too loud. Coach Fry wouldn't like it here today either. Before the foul, timeout Michigan. It's their second timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Dwayne Haskins Jr. You know, that, that roar. That's, before I say that, I want to take a look at this is Urban's wife, Shelly. Shelly Meyer. That's the emotion of this very difficult season pouring out. Knowing what they've been through as a family. Knowing what Urban is going through with his health. And the pain that he's dealing with. Due to that cyst in his brain. What people have said and written about the Meyer family and Urban himself. A lot of emotion there. Milton to throw it. Just winds up, tosses it down the field. And it's caught. Nico Collins. Tell you what, this Joe Milton has a nice arm. Hey man, that's better than nice. I mean, that is a cannon. When I go down there and watch pregame warmups, I sit there and I'm just watching Joe Milton throw the football, and it is so impressive. You know, obviously just a freshman from the Florida area, and this guy could be the future of Michigan football right here. This is only the third game he's played in. 
As True Wilson runs it and is tackled inside the five. And the reason that's important is because now with this outcome, Michigan's only going to have one more game, which means that Joe Milton has saved his red shirt. He can play this game. He can start in the bowl game if, you, if they wanted to, and he would still retain his red shirt. First down and goal at the four. Milton running it to the corner. And he gets in for the touchdown. Sixty two thirty eight. A nice run there by Milton, but there's no way to sugarcoat this right now. Gus, this is a bitterly disappointing loss for Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan faithful. It's going to move to 0 and 4 now against Ohio State. And in a year in which he brings a team that was favored, a veteran defense that was ranked number one in the country, number one pass defense in the country. Ohio State had been having so many problems all year. And you thought, boy, if they don't win this one, when are they going to beat Ohio State? And then to come out and play like this and to give up 62 to the Buckeyes, this is about as bitter as it gets. Oof. The Michigan faithful, and trust me, I've heard you. I've, you know, they hit me up on Twitter and everything. They thought this was it, Gus. They thought this was their year. These are his players versus Ohio State. You know, they had played so many close games that you thought, boy, this is the one that they're going to get. I can imagine the disappointment for the Michigan fan base right now. And it seemed like he had put to bed all those silly hot takes about him being an overrated coach but unfortunately a result like this is going to allow you know those click baiters to come back and at least have entertain those conversations again. Jim Harbaugh has done an excellent job at the University of Michigan in my opinion. No question. Especially considering what he inherited and what he took over. Only four years. Charge timeout, Ohio State. Their first. It's to be a 30 second timeout. 316 to play in the fourth. If there is any consolation, the loser of this game, they could be heading to the Rose Bowl. <laughs> yeah, maybe. May right? If now Ohio State were to go on some sort of run that was similar to that run that we saw in 2014 after JT Barrett went down Cardell Jones came in and led the Buckeyes to the national championship if the Buckeyes were to make their way into the playoff Michigan would go to the Rose Bowl and face the winner of next week's Pac 12 championship game on Fox between Washington and Utah. Uh, but that's only if Ohio State can get themselves into the playoff if they don't go to the playoff then the Rose Bowl will take the winner of next week's Big Ten championship game between Northwestern and these Buckeyes. Here's the onside kick. And it goes out of bounds. Buckeyes will have it in Michigan territory with 316 remaining. Harris Campbell. K.J. Hill, the receivers for Ohio State. Johnny Dixon have been wonderful. You know, you, you start to wonder, Gus, this is what, watch that game last night between Oklahoma and West Virginia. You, you start to wonder, you know, you know what Tua Tungavailoa has turned Alabama into. You wonder, can you just be a great defense and get yourself to the playoff or win a national championship in college football anymore? I think that it has gone the NFL route where if you don't have the guy pulling the trigger, you're going to have a real hard time when it comes to championship time, late November, conference title games, and potentially in the playoff. Well, it looks like Alabama has a guy pulling the trigger. Clemson has a guy pulling the trigger. Trevor Lawrence, the freshman quarterback at Clemson. Notre Dame has certainly found their trigger man in Ian Book, who has transformed them from you know, just a kind of an average offense to an offense that is fairly potent. And then both Kyler the teams. Murray at Oklahoma, this man at 
Ohio State competing for that fourth spot. You know, you, you got dudes, man. I mean, I tell you what, these guys, they're more ready to dominate this game than ever when they get to the college level, and Dwayne Haskins has proven that out. Haskins handing the ball off. Mike Weber. And ultimately, in particular with, and as much as this hurts me to say, with Milton's injury at UCF, I think now we're just boiling down to essentially a Buckeye Sooners conversation for that fourth spot. Here's Weber again. And Weber stays on his feet and gets out of bounds inside the 10. You know, Oklahoma's got a big task, a rematch with Texas in the Big 12 championship game. And Oklahoma's defense has gotten worse, and Texas, I would argue, has even improved since the middle of the season. So that's going to be a really difficult ask for Oklahoma to play that Texas team again. Interested to see what Urban Meyer does here. Does he go the Woody Hayes route? First and goal of the nine. They run it. Urban Meyer from Toledo, Ohio. Went to the University of Cincinnati. There it is, victory formation. That's All the right. signal. Put him up. Johnny Dixon on the field. He'll play safety. And Dwayne Haskins going to take a knee in the game. 62, man. 62. And the question is, is this the final game for Urban Meyer at Ohio Stadium? Ohio State, 573 yards of total offense versus the number one defense in the country. <laughs> Urban Meyer does it again. Perfect against Michigan. This game on this day belonged to Urban Meyer's Ohio State Buckeyes as he shakes hands with Jim Harbaugh. Ohio State, the 2018 Big Ten East champions. They will head to Indianapolis for a showdown with Northwestern next week in the Big Ten title game. Jim Harbaugh. We'll have to wait for another opportunity against the Buckeyes.